A year ago, I played around with creating illustrations using felt, and I've been getting back into it, starting off with this scene from my Sketch Scouts comic, and of course, creating these adorable portraits of the characters, and I've just been having so much fun with these felt illustrations that I wanna create more. And if you're familiar with my artwork, you know I like to do things like breaking borders of illustration, so I thought it'd be really fun to do that, but with my felt illustrations. There's a few illustrations I want to do. I wanna start off small with some very simple illustrations three heads. When I do my felt illustrations, I also like to use these embroidery hoops. They're these simple wooden hoops that are usually used for embroidery, but I like to use them for my felt illustrations because it's just a different way to work and I think it's really cute. And I was thinking it would be really fun if we made something like different faces. So maybe one we have like a tongue sticking out. Oh, here's another one. What if one of our characters was drooling? That actually might be kind of cute. So let's see. And we can even have it go even farther and it could dangle and sway in the wind. That would be kind of cool. Ooh, I actually really like that idea. I love things that dangle. But what's a 30 motion? You know, every set has to come in three. So what is a 30 motion? We've got a tongue sticking out. That's silly. We've got drool. Maybe it would be fun to have a very angry face and maybe the eyebrows were absolutely massive. Look how angry he is. Oh, this would be really fun to do a lot of stitching details around the eyes to make them look very wrinkly and baggy and intense. Oh, I like this one. This one has a lot of emotion. Another illustration I really wanted to do, and I don't know why, because I don't particularly like frogs, but if the frog's mouths were open and the tongues were leaving the frame and then going behind the frame, I think that would be really cool. Maybe that one's actually catching a fly or something, because I do want there to be a fly. Maybe he could actually be on the edge going off too. I'm gonna have to think about how to stylize this frog because I don't really, I don't really draw frogs. So I'm not really even sure how I want to go about stylizing him, but I'll figure it out. I really want it to go around several times for some reason. I don't know, do I want to keep it simple? Do I want to do complicated? That actually makes me want to play around with something a little more intense. Say we have our embroidery ring. What if we just had a very, very simple illustration of a ghost? But the ghost breaks the border. So I'm going to use a different color for the felt on top. And then I'll have a white that I sew off of the embroidery ring. And then behind the embroidery ring, I'll in how many times have I said embroidery ring? Behind it, I'll have a piece that comes out that is again white. Oh my gosh, this one's adorable. Another simple idea, but it's very adorable. I love our sets of faces. I think they're very expressive and fun and I wanna play around with those, but the ghosts I'm also very excited about. It's always a good thing when you're very excited about a project. So let's get started. As usual, going into this project, I thought, oh, this will be simple. I'll just do some simple illustrations, have fun with it. And several days and several hours later, but like I mentioned, during these times, it's really good that I find myself very passionate about a project. So I was really excited to get started with these pieces. So let's get into it. This drilling face was the first face that I did and I learned a lot about what worked and what didn't work with these illustrations breaking the border. So right away, I was realizing that simple is better, which is sort of how I feel about all of my art, but the most biggest and more specific detail was the freckles on this face. So right away, I was thinking about just putting three freckles on each cheek. This is something I commonly do in my illustrations and something else I like to do in my illustrations is put freckles on my faces. So after three freckles on each cheek, I started to think, well, what if I went ahead and put a bunch of freckles and just filled the face with freckles? But I don't know that using black thread translated as a freckle like it does with black ink on an illustration. So the freckles sort of looked like stubble thanks to a comment that was made 
made on my Twitch chat. So I wanted to embrace the stubble. It's not something I normally do. So I started to add stubble along the jawline going into the chin and it just, it did not look good. So after sewing all the pieces on this face and adding even more stubble, I decided that I just wanted three freckles on each cheek and that's what I did. I removed all of the stubble, all of that stubble I put effort into. You live, you learn, you make mistakes. It's good. You know, you know, going forward, I know that I don't, I don't like it. And there it is, a drooly face. face is the original that started the face series. It's the tongue face. So going into the colors of this face, I didn't want any of these to be a normal, you know, skin color. I didn't want it to be a pale skin. I didn't want it to be a dark skin. I wanted colorful colors. I wanted, well, honestly, literally anything but yellow, but with the drool face, I couldn't think of a good color that would match a sort of emotional face that didn't didn't look weird. So going into our sticking out tongue face, I didn't want another yellow face. I didn't want a peach color. I didn't want brown. I didn't want anything normal looking. I didn't want a human face. I know the sort of blue face with a purple top can suggest nausea or just sick feeling or scared. But to be honest, I thought it made a cute color. So I started off with this base of a light blue and purple face. I added a tongue. It's smiling. It has silly eyes. Pink cheeks. We've got the three freckles to again continue on with our previous face and tie them all together. And at this point I was thinking a simple face would be nice, but I thought adding a few stitched details here and there would be really nice. So I added some eyebrows and some sort of cheek creases under the eyes. So it looks like it looks a little confused, a little worried, a little frightened, but overall I think the small stitch details are very nice and I really like the simplicity of this face. It's cute. Moving on to our third and final face, we have the angry face. And this one is, of course, my favorite. Is it because I'm always angry? Maybe, but I just find that angry faces can be very silly and fun and obviously very expressive. At first I went to this face feeling a little silly. I was playing around with eyebrow placement. Did I want one up and one down? Did I want the eyes to go in opposite directions? A lot of changes went on with this face as I was stitching the details. I also thought about making the sides of the mouth a little bit more flat, which then of course made me create cheek creases, which I think added a lot of fun details tail to this face. We have the nostrils. And of course we cannot forget the most fun and most interesting detail in this face are all of the wrinkles around the face. Well, nope, I meant the eyes. Adding all of the stitches around the eyes was just so much fun. It made the face just look so intense. Something about adding creases and wrinkles around the eyeballs just makes an expression very intense. And we cannot forget the eyebrows. The eye eyebrows are of course what's breaking the border in this face. It makes this expression very intense. Obviously moving them up or down can really create different expressions, but overall I went for the basic leveled eyebrows. This expression is just so intense. It's so much fun and it's definitely my favorite. I love this face. Just look at it. Just look at all three of them. Overall, I love the result of all three of these faces, but let's move on to other illustrations.
If you recall from this sketch segment, I was really struggling with how detailed I want to go into this frog illustration. And after how long, oh my God, it took me to finish those three emotion faces. I decided to go very simple with this frog illustration. Not only that, but I also just kind of felt like these felt illustrations worked a little bit more better and successfully if you kept them simple. I think once things get a little bit more close a little bit too detailed as you can see with the freckles they just don't work as well so going into this illustration we have our frog and I wanted to focus on the tongue circling around the embroidery hoop and as you can see I created our frog after stylizing it by sketching it out and then I sketched out the tongue because I wanted to make sure that the tongue worked the shape was correct and also I only had so much felt and I didn't want to waste it. So I had to plan this very carefully. In the end, it was very simple. After you create a felt illustration using paper, it's very easy to follow the pattern and make sure that you create pieces that work with what you are creating. So after all the pieces were cut out, it was very simple to just follow the pattern. And when it came to creating small details with this illustration, once again, following what I learned from the freckle situation in the previous face illustration, I learned that less is more. So I wanted to create these warts or just details in the frog. And I knew that less was more. So I only created a few warts. With the fly, I was also thinking about making it look a little fuzzy looking with some stitching, but I decided not to do that. Gave it some simple eyes, gave some simple reflections of juiciness on the tongue. And honestly, I think the frog illustration turned out really cute being simple. It has a cute simple background, just a very simple patterned piece of material. And there you go. There's our frog material felt illustration. It's cute. I love this little guy. And there it is. our ghost illustration. This was originally actually supposed to be a absolutely massive abstract piece, but I thought to make it a little bit more cute, a little bit more fun and playful, I would turn it into a ghost piece. Basically, the concept is exactly the same. Instead of creating ghost shapes, I was going to create simple shapes like triangles, squares and circles, repeating patterns, overlapping colors like red and yellow creating orange, blue and yellow creating green, stuff like that. But again, to make it cute, we're making ghosts today. So I started off by putting simple and cute patterns in each embroidery hoop. And then I also basically chose each of those patterns depending on what colors of felt I had that would resemble the ghosts going over those patterns and making them a little bit transparent. So the focus of this piece is can I create transparency or at least a transparent effect using felt? I had to choose a pattern that was very simple so that when a ghost went over it, it didn't look weird if it was simplified to a single color. So something like large stripes wouldn't look good with a simple color over them, making it transparent. Something like the salmon color with white dots looked very believable if something went over over it and you didn't see those dots. So I chose the colors and patterns depending on what felt I had, if the pattern was simple enough and it was time to design our ghosts overlapping the patterns. I wanted this to look like maybe I just had some very cute patterns displayed and there was ghosts flying over them. So that was my focus. I do want to go back and make a piece with a single ghost that I sketched out before, but for now I think this really complicated piece that connects all three together is really interesting, very unique, and I absolutely love it. Now this is definitely the most challenging piece simply because connecting all these pieces together and making sure that the shapes connected, that they lined up so that when I hung them they weren't super wrinkly, that was definitely the biggest challenge, making sure that my calculations were correct, making sure that the felt wasn't super 
frankly, I will admit I wasn't the most successful, but it was very difficult and I am very happy and very proud of the effects and I think that this was a super successful piece. I think it turned out super fun. I'm really impressed with how a sort of transparent effect was created with a white ghost going over this simple colored patterns. That green, even though there are a lot of spots, we have a light green going over them. It looks like a white ghost is going over it. We have the dark gray. It looks like a ghost is going over it, creating a lighter gray. In the same in color, we have a ghost going over it, creating this lighter pink sort of salmon color. I think all of the effects of the ghost turned out super successful. Sewing these all together again was the most difficult and especially just time consuming. It was very time consuming, but this is something I definitely want to tackle again in the future. I want to do a single ghost. Like I said, my sketch originally was a single ghost illustration. I want to try that because I think it would be very cute. It could pair well, very well with this piece. And overall, definitely a fun and successful experiment. Cute, fun, interesting. I love it. And that is it for my felt illustrations. Thank you all so much if you made it to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this felt illustration video. If you want to watch more of this sort of content, go on and smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and also head on over to my Twitch channel, link in the description. And you know what? A huge thank you to all of my patrons for their support. If you want early access to these videos, secret sketches, and more, check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Thank Thank you guys all so much for the support. Stay golden. Bye. And now a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want to be in the credits at the end of my videos, see secret sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking a link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Bye.